Hello friends, in this video I'm going to introduce smart pointers and it's just going to be a practical introduction. I'm not going to hit everything in smart pointers because there's a lot to you know, there's a lot of subtle edge cases and there's a lot of use cases, but I just want to introduce it from a practical standpoint. Why would you ever need to use smart pointers? What makes them so smart, etc, etc. So I'm just going to make an assertion. Basically, in, in C++, every time there's a new used in code, the operator new, there should be a matching delete. And this is sort of similar to the C. This is analogous to the C's. Every time there's a malloc, there should be a free kind of rule. And it's just so that you don't get memory leaks because memory leaks can really build up memory and then you'll get like a stack over overflow or a heap overflow or whatever you call it. And it's just gonna be bad and it'll crash and slow down your game if you're making a game or whatever software you're making. Anyway, um, so the problems you get from this is who actually owns the pointer? And you can't tell this just from having a pointer to say, class A has a pointer to a an object or a, a, a pointer to a, uh, let's say a float. And then class B has a pointer to that same float. Which of the two owns the pointer? Well, you can't tell just from the two pointers because it's it's, not clear. So we don't know whose job it is to delete the pointer. And you don't even know who how to make sure that every pointer is actually deleted. Um, so this is bad. This is really makes things really confusing, convoluted, leads to like really hard to debug uh, code. So another very important um, another very important problem is what if an exception occurs in a constructor after you've nude some memory and if it happens during a constructor after mem after the memory has been nude, you aren't going to be able to delete that new pointer because there's no destructor call um, where you would delete where you would normally delete it. So, and I, and I should clarify here in the problem that um, all of the objects that have um, been fully constructed in the in the constructor so far will be deconstructed or destructed, I guess, is the better way of saying it. So what I want is just a pointer to delete itself, you know, like other objects do. Like you have a float on the stack and then it just takes care of itself and I don't have to worry about it. That's what I want from pointers, but pointers are so complicated because you have to delete them somewhere and you have to know who owns them. So the solution that a lot of really smart people came up with is called the smart pointer. And it's smart because they know when they are no longer wanted. And you might be wondering, Chris, how on earth do they, how on earth would they know when they don't want to be wanted, um, when they aren't wanted anymore? How are they, how can they be smart enough to do that? And that's where the different types of smart pointers come into play. Um, each smart pointer has different semantics and different ways of letting the pointer, letting the reader of the code know when the smart pointer should be going out of scope. So in this episode, I'm just going to just go over the scoped pointer and the shared pointer, which are just two different smart pointers, just like a rectangle is a square, a scoped pointer is a smart pointer, and a shared pointer is a smart pointer. And then I'll just mention these other three types of smart pointers, like there's a weak pointer and a new unique pointer in C++11. Also, there's the old auto pointer, which you, pro you probably won't ever use this, but those are just three that I'll mention, and then I'll go over the other two in this video. So let's talk about the scoped pointer. The scoped pointer is deleted conveniently when it goes out of scope, hence the name scoped pointer. So some examples of scopes, in case you don't know what a scope is, like the, if it's a member of a class, the scope is the class that it's in. And when the class gets deleted, then it gets deleted. And when it's declared in a function, the scope is the function. So pretty much any time you see curly braces, you're going, you're making a new scope. Sometimes it's in a for loop. Anyway, um, more about scoped pointers. So I have an example of a very contrived example where we're just going to clean it up with scoped pointers so we can see where exactly scoped pointers work. So I have this struct A, first of all, and we'll look at main in a second. And like I said, this int pointer is in the scope of this class A. So Let's use this to help us. So 
right now we're newing it at the constructor call and then we're deleting it inside of our destructor. And this is a very common pattern and we can clean this up with a scoped pointer pretty nicely. So I'm going to use a boost scoped pointer. There's scoped pointers included in, um, I think it's a unique pointer in C++11, but I'm not totally sure, so don't quote me on that. So I'll include boost scoped pointer dot HPP. And then just trade this delete in, or trade this int pointer in with a boost scoped pointer of type int. We don't say of type int pointer because the, the scoped pointer is pointing to an int. So we say what it's pointing to inside of the templates. And this is kind of analogous to a vector, would be a vector of type int. Um, so now that we have this int pointer, we don't need to actually delete it because when this when this class goes out of scope, when it's getting destructed, our int pointer will call its destructor and delete the pointer inside of it. So we can delete that. And now we no longer need to uh, explicitly declare our destructor, so we can get rid of that too. So that cleans things up a bit. The other more common, or less common, I think, example is a scoped pointer inside of a function. So we, here we have an int pointer, which is getting a new int, and um, we're deleting it at the end of the function. So this is a good chance to use our scoped pointer again. So we can change this int pointer to a boost scoped pointer of int. And then we have to, instead of setting it equal to a new int, we have to actually call its constructor with a new int. But that's not a big deal because we no longer have to delete it. And that cleans that up. As a quick review, a pointer is deleted at the end of its scope when its destructor is called. And number two, you can put the type to point to inside of the angle brackets, i.e. boost scoped pointer to int is analogous to an int pointer. A couple more things about scoped pointers. You can't copy a scoped pointer, and therefore you can't use them in STL containers like a vector or a set. That's where the shared pointers will come in. You can swap pointers with another scoped pointer, and you can also reset the scoped pointer to anything you want, deleting the object currently owned. So up here, I could do int pointer dot reset with a new int, and this int inside of here would be deleted and replaced with this new int. So here's another contrived example to demonstrate the need for a shared pointer. So we have the struct owner, and all it does is it takes in a pointer to an int and constructs its int pointer with that int pointer. So all it does is contain this int pointer. Let's say it does other things, but right now all it's doing is owning this int pointer. <clears throat> Maybe it needs to act on this int pointer somehow, like needs to know about it. Anyway. So we have in our main function, we create a new int pointer, and then we construct three different owners, A, B, and C, with the same int pointer. So they're all referring to the same int, and they all need to be referring to the same int because they all share it. But the problem is, when, when we're done with our A, B, and C, that's when we want to destruct our int pointer. But where do we delete it in this case? Uh, in this case, owner C is the last person to have control over this int pointer so we want it to be we want it to be deleted after owner c is destructed but we can't just have it be a scoped pointer because at the end of when owner a destructs its variable then owner b won't need to destruct its it, owner b won't have the same int pointer you know it'll it'll be pointing to bad memory so <clears throat> here's where our shared pointer comes in So the way a shared pointer works is a shared pointer will share its ownership with other shared pointers. And as soon as all the shared pointers to it are destructed, the pointer it's pointing to is deleted. So let's fill in our example with shared pointers. <clears throat> and 
instead of taking in an int pointer, it'll take in a shared pointer. To an int. Instead of owning an int pointer, a naked int pointer, we'll own a boost shared pointer to an int. Now instead of constructing, uh, instead of constructing a naked int pointer, we'll construct a boost shared pointer. Much in the same way we construct our scope pointer. Now after C goes out of scope, C will be the last int pointer, shared pointer to an int. And once the last one goes out of scope, then the pointer will be deleted. One additional note on shared pointers is that they are copyable, so you can use them in STL containers. And that's very important. There's one final example I want to show you, and this is just some stuff that applies to shared pointers and scoped pointers alike. And smart pointers in general, I think, if they're implemented properly. So let's say I have this struct object and all that's inside of it is just this int value. So I can make a scoped pointer. Here I'm making a scoped pointer to this object, pointer. So we can check to see if the pointer exists, just like a regular pointer. And this won't be executed because pointer defaults to null. So we can reset it with a new object and then we can check again if pointer, this will be executed since there is something that we're pointed to. And we can also dereference like a pointer. So here we are doing star pointer just as if it's a regular pointer, but this is because um, scoped pointer and shared pointer overload operators star, so, or asterisk or what, what not, but <clears throat> it acts just like a pointer and that's, this will return what um, our smart pointer is pointing to. And then we can also set the value with a arrow dereference operator instead of the star operator. So just want to show you guys that smart pointers act just like regular pointers. So this has been a, a quick introduction to pointers, smart pointers. And there's a lot out there. There's auto pointers, unique pointers, and um, weak pointers, which I didn't get into. So. I would encourage you guys to go read up on that stuff on your own, but this is a quick introduction, so thanks for watching, guys.